brothers and sisters, just one announcement quick. In the line with COVID-19 regulations, please note the following. All in attendance must wear a mask at all times. No physical greeting is allowed. Please ensure a distance of 1.5 meter for seating and also when you leave this gathering. Families from the same household are allowed to sit together. The congregation will not sing. We will listen to the organist or the soloists. In the event of contact and tracing protocols, the attendance register of today will be made available to the Department of Health. A most blessed divine service to all. Thank you.
Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Merciful, kind, heavenly Father. Father, we gather here today as a special congregation. And we also gather for a special purpose, dear Father. That we can come today and say farewell to a friend, a family member, a mother, grandfather, grandmother, and also a great-grandmother, dear Father. Father, we ask that you bless us here in these few moments. And we are thankful that thou hast allowed us to come into your house in this day, that we can gather here, that not only do we come that to say farewell, but also to be comforted, to be strengthened, dear Father, to receive your grace, to receive a word that may heal the wound that's been caused. Yes, there's tears today, there's sadness, dear Father, but we also want to make this a joyous occasion. We also think of many who have said farewell to loved ones in this day, also who gather in the same fashion as we do, dear Father. Many will still say farewell in the coming weeks, and we think of them. We ask that you grant them also comfort, grant them also the strength. Father, now we want to be covered by your grace. We want to be covered by the thoughts and the prayers of our leaders and those who cannot gather today. And we think of them also who wanted to participate in the service, who wanted to be here, but they cannot, dear Father. Not through their own will, but through the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Father, we now ask that you come and you bless us and you grant us what we need for spirit, mind and soul, dear Father. We want to experience thee. We want you to sanctify us now. Let us have receptive and acceptive hearts, dear Father, that we may accept what is done by thee is well done. Come now into our midst. Bless us more than what we expect. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My beloved brothers and sisters, dear bereaved family, our Bible word for this divine service comes out of the book of Genesis. We read the chapter 24, a portion, portion of the 56th verse. Do not hinder me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away, so that I may go to my master. My dear brothers and sisters, friends, family, bedroefdes, our Bible word for vanmiddag comes from the book of Genesis. In ons lees Genesis hoofdstuk 24, een gedeelte van die 56 e vers. Moet my nie ophou nie, aangesien die Heere my weg voorspoedig gemaakt het. Laat my trek, dat ek na my Heer kan gaan, so ver.
my beloved brothers and sisters we are gathered here today not a place we would normally gather for a divine service on a Saturday but because of what transpired in the life of Marlona today we come and we show our last respects we come and we support the family we might have been somewhere else today but the Lord wants us in the house of the Lord today in his house he wants us close to him for these few moments and the family has provided us with a eulogy of the late Lorna Millicent Moulton I when I received the email from Auntie Jenny, she said, if it's too long, we can make it short. But three pages does not justify a life of 81 years. 81 years is truly a lifetime. And I will first start where each one of my Lorna's children has written a short version of how they, what she meant to her during what she meant to them during her lifetime. First, I'll start with the youngest son, Carl. We are here in loving memory of our mother, Lorna Millicent Moulton. Today, we are privileged to share both our joy in the gift that her life was to us and the pain that her passing brings. In sharing the gift of joy and pain together, may this allow allow us to remember the joyful and happy moments more clearly. <coughs> Mommy was born on the 3rd of March 1940 and passed away on Saturday 13 March 2021, surrounded by all her children. And I believe even the children that are not here today, they were also present. She reached the golden age of 81 years and she was the last surviving member of her family. We were privileged to be with her when she took her last breath. It says here, you were not alone when you passed over so quietly. You even sent us a rainbow to show us that everything is well with your soul, that you are at peace and that all your labors and trials are finally over. It says here she had an uncomplicated, humbling faith. And that is the legacy, legacy she leaves for me today. Her faith and trust in the Lord always stood out for me in every conversation, acknowledging how great God has always been in her life, in the good days and the bad days. <clears throat> Her prayers were always fervent, sincere and powerful, with the knowledge that God will provide enough. She always spoke very highly of her ministers and never had a bad word to say about them because they were men of God in whatever capacity they served. He also says, as a child, I never really saw my mommy get cross. Now he writes something here and I've seen pictures of Auntie Jenny's brother. He's got very nice hair. So what happened here? He says, except for the time when Millie and Jenny gave me a haircut in the bath with the flower scissors. And I'm sure you can guess what that, how that ended up in action. In faith, she says, your unfavoring faith in God and his servants. You taught me when you, at your lowest, look to the highest. I know that when my faith waned, Mother, your prayers carried me. Lisa and Luke often went to your room and requested my pray for me. And then you would ask, what must I ask God? And then she would pray what they asked of him. And they even said, who is going to pray for us now? You gave us the gift of hope. And the words that she quote here says, Ach man, vir die Heere is dit niks om dinge te verander nie. Jy sal sien, morgen is nog een dag en die Heere sal die krag gee. God slaap nie, hy sorg vir sy kinders. Alles gaan alright wees. Jy sal myself kom sê. 
And that is words that we know that people of her generation would give to you as words of encouragement. And then she says on love, love, your love was unconditional. You did not say, I love you very often. Your expression of love was in the form of sacrifice, giving and sharing of yourself with others. You listened without judgment. You could keep secrets shared with you. You never betrayed anyone's trust. You loved deeply and sincerely. And finally, she says again, my mother in a million. And then the middle child, Auntie Jenny. She says, life was not easy for mom, but she made it look like a breeze. Today, my happiness overshadows my sadness. I'm happy in my soul because of what her mom taught her. Mom taught her to pray, to believe, how to believe, how to trust, especially when you don't see a way out. Taught her how to care. And she says, being the middle child, she was the one that needed to look after the youngest brother. Mom taught her the value of offering. That hard work does not kill you. I hope you can tell that to more people today. I taught her how to make a meal with virtually nothing. That no job is beneath you. Just make an honest living. I taught her to be the best at what you do. Even if you're the tea lady, make the best tea ever. Taught her no matter what, if you repent, God will forgive you. If you make a mistake, own that mistake, but never repeat it. She fed her meals that were fit for a queen. Even sugar and bread tasted yummy. Taught her challenges make you stronger. Respect goes a long way. He taught her to be the peacemaker. Her famous words. Play still and lost it in the year of Sahanda. Her mom taught her to love music through her most beautiful solos. And then she says, mom's teaching were in her actions and not always in her words. So finally she says, mom, I'm going to miss, I'm going to smile for a long time. Especially when I think of our last game we played. During mom's illness, I was the one who supported her last bad habit. One day after our morning prayer, I said goodbye to her. Then she says, Gaan ons nie a game speel nie. So I say, okay mamsi, wat er game? In my head I'm saying, blok blok or wegkry perkie. So mom says, rook rook. <laughs> she wanted to have a smoke. Today I'm ordering the flags to fly at half-mast. I salute you, my mother. And here, I'm not necessarily going to be politically correct, but I think her mom called her this name, and she says, from your cover, Kenki. Thank you. Can we have a musical item?
So my dear brothers and sisters, while I was going through the eulogy, I thought after that, we could probably end the divine service. Because everything that needed to be said was said in her eulogy. The way her children testified about her. And the way they testified about her mother and what her mother meant to them. And our text today says that, do not hinder me since the Lord has prospered my way. So in essence, it speaks about the journey here. And today, the journey of my Lorna has come to an end. This journey that she was on, we can say it was a journey on a way to the grace of God. And she has experienced God's grace through a life, through a lifetime that she was on the face of the earth. She has experienced the grace of God through serving God. We know what she meant to us in the congregation and in all the congregations that she could find herself during her lifetime. And what I could say is that she had a deep-rooted faith in our congregation. I can remember as a very young man just confirmed and we would we used to go out like they call it this that time testifying and we would get together at the house of uncle peter and auntie jenny that's where the brothers would come together and we were very young men and means can but she came to myself and my friend and she said words to him. She said, you've got something inside you that I want. And I knew what my friend was capable of. I knew how his spiritual life was at that time. He was gifted. And I became jealous and I thought, isn't this lady seeing anything in me maybe? But that's how she was. That's the character she portrayed. She built us and she built the congregation. She probably implanted in me at that time to also become like my friend. And that's how her faith was. That's what she could see. We could hear in a eulogy. She was fond of praying. And we'll hear later in the word what prayer means to us also, beloved brothers and sisters. And no matter what role she played in the congregation, be it there to wish the brothers well as they go out, or through her singing as we heard, but that was her using her talents. That was her sharing what she received. She didn't bury it, beloved brothers and sisters. She worked with her talents. We experienced it in the eulogy. We as children said the impact that she made on their lives. She also, and I believe this, never felt that proclaiming the word of God or sharing the word of God with anyone was a burden to her. No, she said, as we also heard, that she loved her servants and she had great respect for her servants, no matter what capacity they served in. We also want to have that character where we can serve God, where she can look down from where she finds herself. And be proud of us, beloved brothers and sisters. She also found grace because she could be part of the sacraments on the face of the earth. She could be baptized, she could be sealed, and she could be served with Holy Communion. And that she received out of the hands of those who were placed on the earth. Also her servants that she looked up to. She allowed herself to be shaped and defined as the type of lady that we heard of this morning. We are here today, some of us know her much better than we do. And we know what type of lady Malona was and how she betrayed herself and how she served God. Our word also says today that she found grace by having a family. And I think most of us here today are family. And we were part of that 
filled. We were part of that bubble, like we call it, beloved brothers and sisters. And she received a great deal of love from her family. And that we could experience in her final days. How they loved her, how they surrounded her in her final moments. She has children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that loves her and surrounds her. And I would think that she always regarded her family also as a gift of God's grace. And we know today people say that a child is a gift from God. So trust me when we say today that you are all gifts to Marlona. You came from her. You are her offspring. You are somehow connected to her. So she will regard you all as a gift of grace from God. As we've heard, she loved praying. And she always prayed. And she will continue to pray. And let us see ourselves as honored that we will always be covered under her prayers. Always she will always bring us before our Heavenly Father because in the beyond, the ones, our beloved ones that have preceded us, they still pray for us. They still make intercession on our behalf in front of God, beloved brothers and sisters. So when we feel down and know always that when we only think of our loved ones that find themselves in yonder world, then they are with us. Then they are connected to us. Then we say, Ma, please pray for me. I'm going through that trials and tribulations. I'm going through all what you have taught me. All that you've always been there for me. It says further that she, she had a peaceful end to her life. And the contact that we had with the family, it would always be positive contact in these final days. Even her priest told me that when he went there, she told him she's ready. The family even said that they are at peace. So she was also at peace, beloved brothers and sisters. So she had a peaceful end to her life. I think she also wanted the suffering to end, like the children said. They are at peace, but they do not want to see their mother in pain. So they are at peace. She is at peace. And so she had a peaceful entry into yonder world. We do not want our loved ones that find themselves on the face of the earth to suffer unnecessarily. And that's why we also make that intercession. And that's why today we have that acceptance of that she's in a better place. She's with God. She's where she wants to be, beloved brothers and sisters. She's there where we want her to be. All we need to do is to follow in that footsteps. Continue with that sandwich recipe. I'll go to Auntie Jenny one day to maybe have a borsi and tomato sauce sandwich. But let us continue that legacy. Let us keep her legacy high. Let us always Remember them also. Never forget them. Now we find ourselves in a time where we are mourning. And there's nothing wrong with mourning, my beloved brothers and sisters. There's nothing wrong with it. We need to mourn. Mourning will heal us. Although we might say, my mom don't want me to cry over her. No, we need that time. We need that time also to be close to her. Then, beloved, she also found grace by remaining secure in the love of Christ. She remained close to God through her life, no matter what circumstances she went through. In her eulogy, it says that life wasn't easy for, for her. Life isn't easy for us as well. Life isn't easy for many, beloved brothers and sisters. Many turn away from God. Many think, why did you take my mom? Why did you take my loved one? No matter what age they found themselves in. When God does something, beloved, it's well done. He found it fit. And we have that faith and we have that trust in Him. That what He does is His will. Sometimes we might not understand. 
why he does certain things. But let us have the assurance that one day we will also know why he does certain things, beloved. We must also be assured and rest assured that see, she is safely in the arms of Jesus. I think that was our opening hymn today. That is, she is safely with, with God. She is under his wing. He will take care of her. We don't need to take care of her anymore. No, when we go to the doctors and the nurses at hospital, they do what they can for us. But there comes a time when they call the family and say, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Then we must accept. We accept it. We pray to God. God allow a miracle to happen in our lives. But sometimes he also needs to intervene. So there's just up to a certain stage where we can, we can do our part, beloved brothers and sisters. Never feel bad for a loved one passing on. But let us know that that loved one, they appreciate what we do for them. So today Malona finds herself in the beyond, in fellowship with those that have preceded her. She's being reunited. How will the joyous occasion be today when she meets up with those, or was when she met up with those that preceded her into the beyond? And she goes and she waits now also for the day when Jesus Christ will return to fetch us all. And like her, we also still await for that reunion. And how blessed will that reunion be when we can be with her. When we can be in one fellowship with each other. So to remain secure and waiting for the day when our Heavenly Father returns. We that's left behind, beloved brothers and sisters, let us remain close to God. Still close to Jesus Christ. Still follow His way. Still follow His commandments. Marlona installed or had an impact on everyone's lives that are here today. And I would think that she would look down onto us, pray for us, and also expect of us to remain faithful, to remain at God's altar. Especially in this time that we find ourselves during this pandemic, beloved brothers and sisters. It's not easy. It's not easy to go to the house of God. We have to book now if you want a seat in the house of God. So sometimes it's not easy and it's easy to say, ah, oh, let someone else go. But let us still, in spite of that, remain praying. Go and make use of the technology that we have where we can be close to God, where we can have our sins forgiven, where we can have our souls prepared for the day when He will fulfill His promise. Because Marlona is waiting for us. And how disappointed will she be if on the day when Jesus sends His Son that we are not there. We are not there to be reunited with her beloved brothers and sisters. So we look forward to that day when we will once more also be reunited. We heard in the prayer that this is not a goodbye. This is a farewell. Till we see each other again. Till we meet again, the solo was saying. And let that keep our fire burning on the face of the earth. That we do not only want to be part of the day when God will send His Son, but we also want to be reunited with those that have preceded us. And this will lead us to eternal and uh, direct fellowship with God one day, beloved brothers and sisters. Where we will be with Him. Where we will be part of that thousand year kingdom of peace. And we, we will be all together in all His glory. Amen. Amen. So, beloved brothers and sisters, today will be a, it's a cremation service. We will now do the committal of the mortal body, and I will ask the congregation to rise, please. I now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, Earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall guard over it 
until, until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us conclude. Let us conclude. Loving Father, Father, we are thankful, firstly, that we could come in your house on this day, dear Father, where we could have this special divine service to bid farewell to a sister, a mother, grandmother, and also great-grandmother, dear Father, friend to many, and part of the family to others, dear Father. Father, we ask now that you accept her also into your grace, and we also want her and we know that she is safe with you we ask that you continue to bless the family also grant the comfort that they need grant the strength that they need give them the peace in their heart so that they may also accept and so that they may also move move forward let us always be covered under your grace and under your love we also look forward to the day of tomorrow where once more we will gather into your house and whatever has been planned also during the divine services tomorrow, dear Father, let your hand of blessing also rest upon that. Father, we also pray that you shorten time and way. We also want to be with our loved ones. And we ask that you send your son, that you fulfill your promise. And that we may all be together in that place that thou hast gone to prepare for us. This we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. congregation to be seated on behalf of the family I'll call Priest Peters to do the thanks. Firstly as a family we are eternally grateful to our Heavenly Father who carried us as a family during the time of mom's illness and of our bereavement. We have the insurance that God was and is still with us. Our entire family appreciate your praise, time, messages of support and condolences, whether it be in person or via phone calls or texts or WhatsApp messages. Today we experience a funeral in a different setting, which you all understand. We are mom's mouthpiece and say thank you from her as well. To our ministers, organists, soloists, and everyone else who had a hand during this time, we say a big thank you. We know you do not want any personal thanks because you do this from the heart, but please accept our thanks. To Clinton and his team, Thanks for helping us share these moments with those who cannot attend in person through the, through the streaming process. Our thanks go to Jay Haynes and Sons, the undertakers. Stephen, you and your time have treated mom's remains and us with so much dignity. We ask God to continue to bless your business. Dr. Hopley. We are thankful for the time you took to come and see mom at home. Here again, the dignity song has been amazing. And then, Yolandi, mom's care for the last eight weeks. Yolandi, you became a part of our family. We appreciate the way you worked with mom. Your empathy, patience, joyful dispensation, are some of the attributes that make you, you. 
Thank you from all of us, even call in the UK, who thought technology, who through technology could also see and speak to you. May your cup overflow. And then this is personal message from Carl, who is in UK. I would like to personally thank Peter, Jenny, Craig and Bryn for looking after mom over the years and especially in the final days of mommy's life where your home became mommy's home. My thanks go to Patrick, Millie, Lisa and Luke for taking such good care of mommy and bringing so much joy into her life. A big thank you to Elton, Celeste and Mackenzie. And it says, Mackenzie, you were more psychic. I don't know in what, but it may be. <laughs> For looking after mommy in the later years of her life. I do not have enough words to express my thanks, but thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless you all richly in your spiritual life and may God bless all graciously in natural lives. Much love, Carl, Marilyn, Gabriel, and Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, priest. And now we will listen to our final anthem. <laughs> Thank you. So beloved, as we will leave the building now, we just request of you that we still observe all COVID-19 protocols and regulations. Um, I will now ask the pallbearers to come forward and as the cortege leaves the building, we will listen to a musical item. Thank you.
born by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the will of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. Say goodbye when you 